This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. I'm going to do something a little different in this video. I don't normally uh, recommend everybody else's content. I don't normally uh, do advertisements. <laughs> it's not an advertisement. But David Pakman yesterday did an interview with Phil McGraw. And in, in the, the, the onset, before the interview aired, uh, I saw a post on Instagram about it and I read through the comments and there were a bunch of people who were not happy about it. Why are you platforming this guy? Why are you giving this guy? This better be, you better be asking hard hitting questions and a lot, of, a lot of consternation about the very fact that David was gonna have an interview. David Pakman and I have very different styles. <laughs> we'll just say that. Uh, I think we are equally effective. We're just different. I think his personality is just fundamentally different than mine. I'm more aggressive. I'm, I'm me. And he's, he's him. That's, that's profound right there, right? I'm, I'm myself and he's himself. <laughs> so I, this video really serves to, I think, uh, be instructive about different styles can be equally effective. They're just different. But also, I want to highlight what a scoundrel and a know-nothing that D Dr. Phil is. What a danger to the, the, the fabric of American culture he is. Dr. Phil is a parasite who leeches off of the misery of others to fill his, his rotund belly with their blood and their soul and their very essence. His entire show was predicated upon um, exploiting the miseries of people who are alcoholics and drug addicts and people who have very severe problems. He wasn't there to help them solve their problems. He was there to shine a bright light on them and mock them and uh, treat them with derision. It's just the way it is. And he's just written a book about the culture wars and it's, it's, it's Fox News fodder is what it is. I'm gonna play a very brief clip, just under two minutes, I believe, of this, of this uh, interview with Pacman and him, where they're talking about uh, the, the, one of the biggest threats of our time with cancel culture, which by the way, doesn't exist, but that, that college professors just left and right are being, they're being decommissioned. They're, they're having their tenure stripped away for things that are nothing. It's such a problem that he needed to go to his typewriter and write a book about it. It was so impactful on our culture that so many professors are being fired, are being held to account, are being canceled, that he needed to talk about it in a book. And then when asked about it, in David Pakman's classic, very effective style, he's morose and he's looking down. I mean, he didn't look happy. And he pledges, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the evidence that you seek. And then we'll talk about that first. Watch this clip from yesterday's video, which you should watch the entire thing, Every moment of this is worth watching. Here's David Pakman talking to Dr. Uh, Phil McGraw. I looked for the revocation of tenure for professors in a lot of these schools that you talk about or allude to. And really, it seems that when tenure is being stripped, it's for real wrongdoing. Plagiarism is uncovered sexual harassment of students, et cetera. I really struggle to find evidence in a country of 330 million people of tenure being stripped just because of using the wrong language. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't wacky memos that go out or I, I'm with you that this stuff exists anecdotally. But if we think about what is happening big picture, I actually struggle to really find examples of this as an epidemic. Tell, tell me where I may be missing something. Well, I don't know what you mean by epidemic. Well, that it's happening that that professors are being stripped of tenure, not for serious violations of their, uh, you know, like I said, sexual harassment, plagiarism, being uh, uh, involved in criminality, but just because they said something that is maybe not politically correct. I'm just not seeing that tenure is being stripped from professors for that. Do you have any examples of professors that have lost tenure in that way? Uh, I do, and I'll provide it to you. How's that? I'll get you a list and send it to you. That would be. I would love to do that because if that is happening, uh, I want to expose that and I want to talk about that. So first, the most important question that needed to be asked that wasn't asked was, "What's going on with the mustache?" 
Why, why can't you Alex Trebek yourself or, or Tom Selleck yourself and you just shave it off? Just create a new you, Dr. Phil. You don't have to walk around with the chomo mustache for the rest of your life, brother. It, it's not so intrinsic to your image that you can't step out of it. So David, if I have any advice, it's get to the hard hitting stuff, brother. Ask the questions that need to be asked. <laughs> But what I want to talk about is David's style here, effective. He allows Dr. Phil to make an asshole of himself, asking questions that have very clear answers and then giving him the rope to hang himself, metaphorically speaking. This more people need to be open to this style of engagement. It's not my style. I wouldn't be good at this. I would have come right out of the gate like David did, talking to him about his Fox News appearances and his very clear conservative bent, even though he's, oh, I'm not political, I'm not political. I'm like a bump on a log and a frog on a tree and a goat on a field or whatever folksy nonsense he constantly spews. He's like a, a, a dumber version of Ross Perot, if you're familiar with who Ross Perot was. He did indeed provide the evidence that he said he would, the evidence that he said he would, of this widespread cancel culture. So widespread, says Dr. Phil, that he felt compelled to write a book about it. This is from the description in the video. Uh, here are the sources Phil sent us. The first involves an untenured adjunct professor. The second involves a professor's contract not getting renewed rather than a termination. And the third involved the professor being removed for teaching certain classes rather than a termination. Three examples, three. There should be hundreds, if not, I mean, be dozens, only dozens of examples for it to be a problem worth writing a book about, for it to be a problem worth trying to gin up a frenzy about something that is absolutely not happening. And then the examples that he does give don't even uh, align with the thing that he said the evidence that he would provide would be. So uh, good job, David, like you need my encouragement, but uh, we need more of this. Uh, I don't quite have the channel of the size or, or reach to, to probably have a Dr. Phil on. It would be likely that he would check out my content first and see my style and not think it would be a, a benefit to his promotional vehicle. <laughs> what do you think about this, though? I'd love to know. Look, I, I know there are different opin opinions about this. I know that, that uh, people think that my style is the only way and the conversely, there are probably many more people who believe that David's style is the only way. I'm not concerned about the style. I'm concerned about the results. What is the result of it? And the result of this, if you are more of a fan of mine than, than David's, is uh, the result was Dr. Phil being outed as a charlatan. Dr. Phil being outed as, um, I mean, now it's just, it's a cash grab for Fox News viewers to buy the book. Uh, anyway, what do you think? I'd love to know. We can talk about it in the comments below. Uh, I would uh, encourage your participation in this conversation. You can call, leave me a voicemail, 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me, daily at dollamore.com. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you appreciate what I do and you want to help support this work, click the join button below for $1.99 a month. You can become a channel member on YouTube and help produce these videos, take part in, in disseminating uh, this message. You can also go to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Make sure you're subscribed though, like and comment, share this video. All those are great ways. Follow me on social media. If you do share this video on Twitter or wherever, tag me. I'm at Dollamore and I'd love to see it. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. Take care of one another.